This video is part of a series that provides an introduction to propositional logic. Hi, I'm Mick Presnell. In this video, I'll introduce the use of truth tables. I'll provide a brief review of the five logical connectives that are used in propositional logic, then show how truth tables can help us understand their logical properties. This is essential for being able to solve many of the more complex logical problems. First, a quick review of the five connectives the conjunction, disjunction, conditional, biconditional, and negation. In this example, the connective AND is being used to link the two statements the garage is painted blue and James is going home. The conjunction is symbolized by a dot. When two statements are joined by a connective, the result is called a compound statement. Particular statements are symbolized by capital letters, usually selected to remind us of the statements they represent. This example uses the capital letters G and J to stand for the garage is painted blue and James is going home. So the compound statement is expressed as G dot J. But suppose that the garage is not painted blue. Then the compound statement the garage is painted blue and James is going home would be false. As in many English examples and implies that both component statements must be true for the entire compound statement to be true. The connective called disjunction is symbolized by the wedge which looks like the letter V. Each statement of the disjunction is called a disjunct. Each disjunct has a truth value and the entire disjunction has a truth value. So it is warm outside can be true or false. The stove is hot can be true or false. And the compound statement it is warm outside or the stove is hot also has a truth value. The truth value of the disjunction depends on the truth values of its component statements. Disjunctions are true if either or both of its component statements are true, and only false if both statements are false. The connective called the conditional is expressed in English as if-then. The first statement in a conditional is called the antecedent, and the second is called the consequent. It is expressed by a horseshoe-shaped symbol. There is only one combination of values of its component statements that make the conditional false, which is when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. All other combinations of truth values of the component statements result in the conditional statement being true. Be careful with this one. It is the least intuitive of the connectives. Most people are inclined to treat a conditional statement with a false antecedent and a false consequent as false. But in propositional logic it would be true. Part of the purpose of truth tables is to remind us that only when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false is the conditional false. The biconditional connective, also called logical equivalence, is expressed by the triple bar. It is true if and only if both of the statements have the same truth value. In other words, if one statement is true and the other is false, the compound statement is false. The compound statement is true if both statements have the same truth value, either both true or both false. The negation doesn't connect two statements, but reverses the truth value of whatever statement or compound statement it operates on. In English, we might say, we don't have milk, which is logically the same as saying, it is not the case that we have milk. Sometimes expressing the longer version of the statement can help remind us of its logical properties. In this case, the statement, we have milk, is negated. Remember that the negation doesn't mean that the statement that follows is necessarily false. Suppose it is false that we have milk. Then the negation of that false statement would be a true statement. The negation reverses the truth value either from true to false or false to true. A truth table is just a table of rows and columns that shows all the possible combinations of true and false values of the, comp of the compound statement. Suppose we have a compound statement made of two simple statements. Since each can be true or false, this results in four possible combinations of truth values. So what we'll call the base table for any compound statement with two statements 
is represented by a table with four rows. True, 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 false, false, true, and false, false. For each statement that is added to a compound statement, the number of possible combinations of truth values doubles. A compound statement with three component statements has eight combinations of values. So we would need eight rows in the table. If there was a fourth statement, we'd need 16 rows, and so on. In this presentation, I've numbered the rows for easy reference, but usually in logic, small tables aren't drawn with the rows numbered. Drawing the base table is a mechanical process. It doesn't require inferring anything. Just having a strategy for drawing all the values without repeating the pattern of true-false values in the rows. That gets harder to do as you add statements unless you have a plan for drawing the table. Here's the traditional way of drawing the, the truth table to be sure you've included all possible combinations without repeating any. Start by determining how many rows you'll need. That will be equal to 2 multiplied by itself as many times as there are component statements in the compound statement. So, if there are two statements, you'll need 2 times 2 rows, or 4 rows. If you have three statements, you'll need 2 times 2 times 2, or 8 rows. Start with the first symbol on the left in the compound statement and work to the right. A capital letter for each statement will be the header for each column. In the example on the left, we have a compound statement containing two statements, W and M. And the example on the right has three statements, W, M, and F. We know that half the truth values of each statement are true and half false. Those are the only two values they can have. So, draw the first column with half the number of total rows as true, then the other half as false. In the next column, alternate writing down half of those true and half false values. Then if there is a third statement, alternate half of those true and false values until you filled all the columns for all statements. In the table on the left, there are four rows needed, so write two true and two false values in the first column, then alternate writing one true and one false in the second column. The compound statement on the right has three different statements, W, M, and F, so you'll need eight rows, two times two times two. So the first column will have four true and four false values, the second column alternating, two true and two false values. Then draw true, false, true, false, and so on in the third column until all eight rows are filled. Now you have base tables showing all possible truth values for the, com for the two compound statements. Now let's look at the truth tables for the connectives, beginning with the conjunction. The base table for the two statements will serve as a reference. In this example, I'll give you $10 is represented by capital D, and I'll buy you lunch is represented by a capital L. The conjunction is represented by the dot. The table on the left is the base table showing all possible combinations of truth values for any two statements. The table on the right shows the truth values when the two statements are joined by the conjunction. We've already seen that for a conjunction to be true, both of its statements must be true. All other combinations are false. Row 1 in this example shows that D is true and L is true. So their conjunction, shown in row 1 in the table on the right, is true. Row 2 shows that the conjunction is false if D is true and L is false, and so on. The table spells out all possible truth values of the conjunction so we can easily see their combinations and resulting truth values. Here's the truth table for disjunctions. In this example, Rita is going to the party is represented by a capital R, and there is a full moon is represented by a capital M. The base table on the left stays the same once again because it shows all possible combinations of truth values for any two statements. The table on the right shows the truth values of the disjunction of the two statements. Row 1 shows that if Rita goes to the party and it is a full moon, then the disjunction, Rita goes to the party, or there is a full moon, is true. 
Rows 2 and 3 show that if only one of the statements is true, the entire compound statement is true. The only time the disjunction is false is when both its component statements are false, represented in row 4. The conditional is represented by the horseshoe and can be expressed in English in this example as if R then M. The base table on the left stays the same, showing all possible combinations of truth values. Row 2 in the right table tells us that if R is true and M is false, the conditional of R and M is false. All other combinations of truth values in the conditional result in the conditional being true, represented by rows 1, 3, and 4. Here's a tip. Notice that the conjunction, disjunction, and conditional all have one row that has a truth value different from the other three. If you can remember that row and its value, you'll know the value of all other possible combinations of the truth values of the two statements. Here's the truth table for biconditionals, also called logical equivalents. In this example, Rita will go to the party if and only if there is a full moon is expressed as R if and only if M. Again, the base table on the left stays the same, and the table on the right shows the truth values for the connected. Notice that the truth table tells us that if R and M have the same truth value, either both true or both false, as in rows 1 and 4, the biconditional is true. The other two combinations of truth values in which the truth values are different result in the biconditional being false. The truth table for negation is even simpler. Negation is represented by the use of the tilde in front of the original statement. The base table is just one column with two rows. The use of negation in front of a statement just reverses the truth value of the statement shown in the second column. In this example, the truth value of it is raining is reversed when it is negated which can be expressed in English as, it is not the case that it is raining, or more commonly, it is not raining. The negation is the only connective that modifies a single statement rather than establishing a link between two different statements. So, truth values allow us to answer what-if questions. For instance, what is the truth value of the conjunction of D and L if D is false and L is true? That's what row 3 shows. If the two statements had those truth values, the conjunction would be false. That's shown because we know both values have to be true for the conjunction to be true, and only row 1 in the base table shows that combination. Truth tables really become useful when we need to determine the truth value of multiple statements with many connectors. Becoming thoroughly familiar with truth tables for the five connectors is essential to being able to solve more complex problems like this example. This is because determining its truth value is just a step-by-step -step process, determining the truth value of components until we can finally determine the truth value of the main connector. There really aren't more complex rules to learn. It's just a matter of applying what you know about the five connectors one step at a time until the entire problem is solved. But that's a topic for another video. For now, mind your P's and Q's, and thanks for watching.